Hi everyone, it's uh, Polar's Lights and Signals here. Um, well, it might look like the same uh, time and day that um, you guys uh, saw uh, this fixture. If you guys don't remember, I did a, a quick review on that thing. Um, but today I'm going to uh, continue this little two-parter and uh, review uh, this fixture. And the reason why um, all these clips are recorded in the same day, well, is this fixture is um, very easy to talk about since there's not much to it. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it with uh, the Pulse Start version you guys are looking at right here. Alrighty, so this one is my uh, 2011 175 watt Pulse Start Metal Halide M250 R2. This one is um, a little bit more unique than um, the other M250. One, because it's Pulse Start Metal Halide, and uh, Two, um, this is probably the first, uh, maybe one of the first, uh, or probably uh, first few street lights in my collection that actually don't have a photocell socket um, because you can see there's no photocell on top of this. Um, so this is just a direct wire um, M250 right here. Um, this one is a new old stock. I got this off of eBay, and I believe um, the person who sold this to me is actually still selling some of these. So um, if anyone is interested in getting um, an M250 in this unique wattage, um, I'll go ahead and put a link down below so you guys can go buy them um, before they're gone. But yeah, um, this thing is pretty much the same as the other um, M250. We'll go ahead and take a look at it though again, just because um, it'll, if I gloss over the um, design, it's gonna make this video really short. But um, yeah, these Pulse Start versions, um, I'm guessing started showing up probably around the late 2000s, probably in like 2008 and nine when uh, Pulse Start started to become a thing. And of course you could get these up until um, these were discontinued. Um, sometime back in the late 2010s, I think uh, 2017 or 18 was when this fixture was discontinued. So yeah, um, like I said, this came offline. Um, this is a new old stock fixture. I've only ran this fixture one time. Um, I do have a Pulse Start lamp in it, so we can uh, watch it warm up, of course. So let me go ahead and lift the camera here, and we can take a quick look at this again. So I'll turn it on its side if it'll stay, there we go. Now you can see with this uh, new old stock version, the paint on it looks really, really well um, applied. It's uh, not bad at all. I will say though, um, General Electric after the 2000s um, started lowering, lowering the quality just a little bit. Um, and I think honestly, it probably wasn't really uh, too bad that they did this, um, just because these fixtures really didn't um, have much more time um, to be around. Um, the paint on this is not powder coated. Um, it is a cooked on paint, which unfortunately can be very bad if uh, moisture gets under this. Um, this paint can chip very easily. As a matter of fact, um, I did scuff it and you can see the paint's chipping. So yeah, not good at all. And um, unfortunately, uh, these fixtures, uh, these newer ones are not anodized. So um, these things can uh, easily corrode if uh, any water gets under the paint. And um, it's pretty much the same, of course. You can see it's that same body style. Has the same barn latch on the front. Has the little spot for your leveling gauge. Of course, um, your photo cell would go right here um, if it had one. Um, the photo cells for these newer versions are, are exactly the same. It's just the ones where you pull up on it to twist it to adjust it, and then you let it down. And it has that little uh, spin plate under it that keeps it um, connected against the housing. But um, I do have uh, plans on adding a photocell socket to this fixture, definitely, because I, I, I love photocell sockets. Um, it's just another way to uh, show off what the fixture can do. And um, I have a brand new um, GE uh, photocell socket that I can put on here. It's actually even newer than this fixture. It uh, came off a bad um busted up uh LED, general electric evolve led and um the very early ones have the same exact photocell socket so i'm just going to put it on here and it'll fit and work exactly the same so yeah i'm gonna do that but yeah if you didn't have a photocell though this pretty much is what it looks like you just have a um it's just blank on top and you can see where the dimples would be to keep the photocell socket in place and then of course moving down you can see the little uh, dome spots that stick out. This is where um, your screws come up into the fixture. 
to uh, keep uh, the slit fitter uh, uh, to uh, hold on to the slit fitter bracket. And to open your uh, M250 up, it's uh, pretty much the same as the last one. All you gotta do is pull forward on this barn latch here, lift it up slowly, and then once you get to the hinge section, just uh, pull it up and under carefully, and the door is off. All right, real quick, we'll look at the inside of the door. It's the same as the other M250. You got some little uh, line details to help the, the water flow down here. Um, you wouldn't want to get water in this, obviously, because um, you know that you'd get some corrosion and uh, stuff from the cooked-on paint. The door is pretty much the same. You got three spots for your drip holes. You still got the same little dimples there. Here is the 175 watt NEMA sticker. Pretty nice when it's new. You got a caution there that's wired for 120. The GE logo is luckily still on this fixture, and I will say it's actually embossed uh, very nicely on here still. And I won't go over the glass, it's exactly the same as the other refractor. Um, no GE logo whatsoever, and it's just your standard uh, shallow bowl um, refractor that goes in these things. So yeah, if you want to get it out though, you got that one tab here. Lift it down forward and voila the glassware is out yep so like I said same as the other refractor no logoing no lettering on the rim just a blank lens that is it I will say the details of course again um, it is a pretty nice clean crisp mold um, and it has uh, really nice uh, refractor patterns. You can see the little squigglies that GE still did with their fi uh, their glassware. And yeah, it looks good, but just uh, pretty basic. Not really much to see. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead now and go down here. Of course, you can see you got the uh, little uh, cavities here for where uh, the legs on the door will sit. This is the hinge. Got that weird piece of metal again to help with... Uh, eliminate uh, bugs and birds from getting in. You got your little arm spacer there to also help with that. Your slip fitter, um, this one's a little nicer. You got a nice little uh, piece of stainless steel here. Um, you got some uh, brass bolts to help keep it down, so that is a little bit nicer. You still got your uh, same step that you can uh, help, that helps you for uh, up and down positioning. And yeah, the ballast in here is uh, pretty spaghetti-like. Um, unfortunately, uh, this is not a GE ballast. Um, this is when General Electric uh, quit making ballasts for their fixtures. So again, you got some cost-cutting measures here to uh, make this fixture much more cheap. But yeah, you can see um, this is a pulse start ballast. Um, I don't think... Oh yeah, there is. There's some stickering on it. If you look right here, you can see it's made by Advanced. It's just an advanced ballast assembly that you pretty much could get for any fixture. Um, the only thing that's a little different about this one is uh, the ballast uh, seems to be uh, really high up for some reason. It's a very tall ballast and you can actually see it on the side. I don't know why this is so tall, but probably because it's a uh, multi-tap. This, uh, this can do up, uh, 120 up to 277, so there's four different taps on it. Um, one thing I don't like though is to switch the tap. You got these uh, kind of weird uh, push connectors. I've, I'm not really a fan of these at all. They're a little hard to use. Um, when I go to put a photo cell on this, I'm going to have to figure out uh, how to make that work. But yeah. You got your terminal block here. It's just a standard uh, terminal block, uh, standard plastic terminal block. You got your ground screw right here in case you want to ground the fixture. Get your capacitor up here, just your generic uh, advanced capacitor, not really very special. And you got your igniter, um, because pulse start lamps need uh, an igniter to help them start, since they uh, technically have a cold start. Right here you can see the, uh, the catalog information, M2RR is the technical name for this fixture. You can see this is made in uh, 2011. This is, um, I guess it was the fifth week of 2011. So pretty uh, pretty much a January, uh, maybe February made fixture. You can see it takes a 137 slash M152 lamp. 
pretty standard and you can see all those lovely voltages there and that it uses a 175 lamp. If we kind of move on here, it's of course a little hard to see. Um, you can see you got a wiring diagram just in case uh, any of the wires go bad and you need to fix something. There you go. So yeah, pretty, pretty nice. Now moving on up to the front here, you can see the wires. They go up into the front of the reflector and you got the same ordeal just like the last one. Um, it has this uh, inside the reflector uh, mounted socket which again if I make my little pretend measurement there and we want to move the ball forward well guess what you can't. So uh, this is a bad design and I'll explain this again. Um, I don't like these um, because when you go to move the ball, well, you can't move it forward or back. It has absolutely no, no horizontal uh, positioning whatsoever. It does have some vertical positioning though. You can see there's, uh, well this one's all the way down at the bottom step. But there are some actual uh, steps on here, so you just basically got to unscrew this to get this to come off of that. And then you can um, adjust your steps accordingly. But yeah, that's really much, uh, that's really all you can do with this. Um, there's no way to adjust the lamp whatsoever. Um, the reflector is nice though. It's just a standard pressed aluminum reflector. But it does have some nice refractor details. And you can see um, they do a good job. And you can see my hands reflecting up there. So yeah, it definitely does a nice job at uh, bouncing light. Okay, let's go ahead and get this out. See, made a little bump there. This is a pulse start lamp. It's just a PLT lamp. Uh, I forget uh, who, uh, I think it's the precision per precision lighting. It's just a, a lamp I bought off 1000 bulbs. Um, they have a good selection of HID lighting still. So if anyone needs um, any lamps uh, brand new, uh, go to their website and you can get those. So yeah, just a standard uh, 175 pulse start lamp. Uh, nothing special at all. So go ahead and put this back in. And then lastly, you got the felt gasket on here. Um, this one looks a little bit too fuzzy, so probably uh, over time this might degrade, but it's nice and new right now and it's uh, well applied. So yeah, pretty cool. And that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, watch this thing warm up. All right, so I got my M250 set up, so let me go ahead and shut some lights off and we can watch this thing warm up. And the curtain closed properly. And there. So uh, this is my 2011 175 watt Pulse Start Metal Halide M250 R2 in one, two, three. Ooh, had quite a quite a uh, freaky start up there, if I uh, may say so myself. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, let's go ahead now and watch this thing warm up. Alrighty, so this thing is at full brightness. So let me go ahead and turn it on its side and whoo! Pulse Start is definitely one of my favorites since um, it's very bright and puts off a pretty cool light. Wow. You can see it's a very nice tannish color light. Um, usually when these lamps start to go out they get more bluish, but yeah you can see. You can see you got that same thing, just a uh, Generic glass details, no logo. This does actually look kind of pretty under there, and I think since the, yep, you can actually kind of uh, see the arc tube a little bit. Since the uh, glass is at least clean and well molded, we go down here, you can see the Pulse Start sticker and the General Electric logo. If I do that, yeah, well, wow, we got a little bit of magic going on. And that's it. That's 
really all there is to see. Alright, so that was my uh, 175 uh, Pulsar M250. You know, even though these M250s are uh, pretty generic, um, I will say they shouldn't be overlooked uh, too much, especially the uh, more unique versions. Um, you know, if, if I were to recommend um, anyone to collect an M250, um, I would go for the more rare stuff, like the Pulse Start versions or the Mercury versions, especially in uh, the 250 watt, uh, 250 watts uh, right there. So yeah, I'm sorry if these, uh, if this video seemed very short, especially the last part. Um, there's just really not much to say about these fixtures at all. Um, these fixtures are pretty nice, and um, I will say General Electric uh, did uh, make these uh, really high quality and did. Uh, indeed uh, make them good but you know there's just not much to them now am I going to keep these uh, M250s in my collection forever um, yes I will especially this one right here because it's 250 watts mercury and y'all know I love anything that's 250 watts mercury so yeah that'll be staying in the collection um, and if this wasn't staying in the collection I wouldn't waste time trying to um, put a photo cell on it in the future but it will get a photo cell and it will stay in my collection so yeah um again i don't really know why people like these fixtures very much they're just super basic but um i guess you know if you guys um do uh have reasons for liking these things please let me know down in the comments below i'd be very interested in knowing why people enjoy these things so much i just i think these fixtures are just super super bland and they're not really very interesting but yeah apparently others do Anyway, um, if you guys enjoyed uh, this little two-parter, um, please uh, feel free to add a like. And um, I hope you guys, and for anyone who is new um, to this channel, please like and subscribe as I will be doing more videos on streetlights in the future. And tell me what your guys' thoughts are on these fixtures. And uh, one thing, uh, please let me know actually, because uh, I'd be interested in your guys' opinion, uh, which one of these is better, if the Mercury one's better? Or if the Pulse Start one's better, um, I honestly don't know which ones are better, but yeah, I'd like to know your guys' thoughts on that. Um, if you guys like the HPS ones, that's totally fine. I'm not a fan of HPS, and I definitely do not care for HPS M250s at all. But um, I do respect uh, the people who do. Um, they are still a part of street lighting. But um, I prefer uh, the Mercury versions really over more than anything. And um, if any of the Pulse Start ones are around, I definitely think they should be saved as well. Anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little two-parter, and stay tuned for the next video. Goodbye.